Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the session. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer, and then we will get into our class. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much once again for giving us this wonderful opportunity to come together and study and learn and pray, God, that even as we gain insights on church planting and the call that you have for us, I pray that, Lord, you will fan into flame passion, a desire to know you more, to walk in your will, O God. Lord, we just surrender ourselves, Lord, each one of us. Uh, everything that we study and learn, Lord, let it uh, be good seed on good ground, bearing fruit in our lives. We just uh, come at this time into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Man. All right. Uh, so before we go ahead, uh, let me just do a quick review of what we did uh, yesterday. Uh, so yesterday we looked at uh, quite a uh, few points and chapter 22 recognizing your call as a pioneer and uh, you know we established the fact that the call of God is very important for our lives right and then uh, so the big question was whether we are called to be a pioneer or whether we are called to serve under uh, 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 another ministry uh, but we look at certain indicators of grace uh, meaning the grace of being a pioneer uh, a pioneering spirit is somebody who has the ability to do something new uh, always being adventurous ability to build bridges to work independently being a visionary so to see things in the future um, a, a stirring in the heart to you know to plan to start something new uh, a, a clear confirmation and direction from God's word. And uh, there are times when we accidentally find ourselves being a church planter. We looked at wrong reasons also uh, when it comes to church planting, uh, not to be motivated or a strife or competition. Uh, and many a times we try to get into ministry or church planting just because uh, the other options didn't work out. Uh, looking at it as a job, right? Okay, this is my job, so I'm going to do it. Now, we got to get out of that mindset. This is not a job. Ministry, you may be a paid staff. We may be working in under some uh, a ministry, but it's not a job. You are serving the Lord. You, you, you have to do, you can't say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is my responsibility. So this is the only thing that I'm going to do. No, you got to step out. You've got to, uh, you know, give you 110%, not just 100%, right? It's... You know, when you look at the corporate, they give you 100% or 90%, 100%, but it's just not so in the kingdom of God. In ministry, you just got to go above and beyond, right? There are things that you have to do, uh, and if even if it's not something that we are comfortable doing, there are times we God will ask us to step out and do it, right? So it's not just a job, but uh, you're serving the Lord. And another wrong reason to do to engage in church planting is for personal reasons. You know, I don't like the city; prefer to move to another city. Or uh, uh, and and these are wrong reasons, right? Uh, or I, I don't like this culture. Um, I don't like the language. Or I, I prefer to do something else uh, in another place. So uh, again, we need to have the right direction from God when it comes to church planting. Uh, then we looked at. Um, whether to pioneer within an existing ministry or to do things independently. So we looked at advantages, right? So there's, the advantages are more when you're looking to pioneer within a ministry, right? You have a well-established uh, strategy, you have methods, you have people, you have uh, like-minded people, you have uh, resources with, within the organization, uh, you have... Uh, uh, you know, you, as an organization or as a church, you may be already been in the church for or been uh, in the city for about eight or ten years. So you've gained recognition. People uh, have seen the fruit of your labor. So starting new ministries within a church is always good. And also when it comes to transitions and handovers, you've always got people within the church plant that we can hand over and train and build up people. Right, but there are also areas that we need to be cautioned when it comes to working under a 
uh, ministry or starting up, uh, meaning when, when it comes to um, pioneering within a church, right? pioneering a, a church plant within an already established church, we saw that uh, number one should be that you should be spiritually in, in you know, aligned with the vision of the church, right? Remember the example that I gave you yesterday, right? If you are, example, this person in a Pentecostal church and he wants to start a church plant in that same church. And if he says, you know, I don't really believe in the gifts of the spirit, it does not make sense for him to do that because Pentecostal church, we know the they emphasize on the gifts of the spirit and uh, you know, even a charismatic church, right? So, so be aligned to the vision, um, uh, be aligned to the culture uh, of the ministry. Is, and thirdly, is there uh, freedom for the release of gifts and uh, uh, you know the release of the gifts of the Holy Spirit uh, uh, flowing in the gifts of the spirit? Is there freedom? Uh, do you have the liberty to uh, minister freely? Right. So these are certain aspects that we must think about. Uh, and uh, does the ministry itself have a heart for this? So for example, there's somebody already working in the church. He wants to start a church in another city or another state to ensure that, OK, does the church have um, you know, a heart for this place? And do they? is there a long-term commitment from them that i can see right uh and do the does the church have well-defined uh systems in place to provide support and assistance and i also shared like you know we have a lot of church plants in india in different places in india and um and what we do is we do uh encourage them we are always there for them we have missions that where we go and uh, as teams we go we uh, minister we help build churches so we, we we can say that you know even through these church plants within already uh, an existing church um it's 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 good to for the leader or the pioneer to be involved in at least a certain certain amount of uh involvement with the pioneer is always good right because they feel loved it could be different cities different states uh but when they are attached to the or they're in touch with the pioneer and uh, in touch with the mother church so to speak what happens is there's this greater sense of uh confidence greater sense of the of reliability there's a uh, there's a feeling of hey i'm not just you know a small church but i belong to a bigger church community uh and that really encourages us right? uh, uh, so whether any one of us are planning to start independently or is planning to start a church plant within an already established church uh we need to keep certain things in mind get clear direction um uh, and i also mentioned that you know when if you're especially if you're planting uh, a, a new church or a new ministry within an established church make sure that you discuss with the pastor be open be free discuss all the points that you'd like to you know discuss uh, be an open book share your thoughts share ask ask the uh, you know the pioneer the the senior pastor to share what is their expectations you share your expectations that way you know, uh, uh, everyone are on, on the same page, right? So we stopped here in chapter 22. Let's get into chapter 23. Uh, in the initial portion of this course, we looked at a few personal uh, preparations that are involved when it comes to church planting, but uh, let's look at a few more in chapter 23. Uh, church planting is not for the faint hearted, which means, uh, I love what Jesus said, when you, Put your hand to the plow finish the work right uh, you must be committed if it is hard work it is dedication it is going back to god it is receiving guidance from god you know, it, you know I, I i was just saying this in the other course uh, earlier this morning i was saying you know there's a cost to the anointing of god upon our life Right. there's a cost for you know when god calls us to be a pioneer 
there's a cost. Uh, it, you know, we can never compare ourselves with others and say, you know, he is not doing it, so you know, he's not praying for three hours, so why should I do it? No, the call of God is different. You must be committed. Uh, it, 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 you know, when it comes to church planting, it's basically you're going into territory where the devil has his uh, presence and you're establishing the presence of God there. And it is not for the faint-hearted. It is not for people who will easily give up. No, not at all. It is you You and I have to depend on the power of the Holy Spirit. We have to depend on God when it comes to personal preparation and pioneering a church. Well, let's look at these points. Number one point, be spiritually strong. Maintain a con consistent, constant personal spiritual life. Sometimes church takes priority. So you gotta you gotta just step back, step back and say, no, I'm gonna maintain my relationship with God, and out of that should flow everything else. Out of that should flow my the whole aspect of pioneering and building, right? Uh, being spiritually strong is basically building a good foundation right if you if if you look at a pioneer and if the person is not spiritually strong now i said this yesterday but i'm going to say this again we can start a church people also will come right no problem people will come but i are we able to build them up Right, Ephesians 5, Paul writes about the fivefold ministry and he says, all of this is there for the building and for the equipping of the church. Right, So we need to be, as, as leaders, as senior pastors of the church, we need to maintain a strong personal commitment, a strong relationship with the Lord. Got to get equipped. Got to read. Got to learn. Got to... Uh, spend time in God's presence, right? We can never come to a place as pioneers. We can never come to a place saying, okay, I've done it. I've studied as much as I can. No, I'm satisfied now. We, we, are the, we are a student of God's word every single day. We get up in the morning, we pray, we surrender ourselves, we surrender our lives, we surrender the ministry. We just put everything and say, God, it's all about you. Right, and, and and we must equip ourselves. We must be prepared. We must, you know, picture this, uh, pastor. You know, uh, in a, you're going to preach every Sunday. Eventually, you're going to have Bible studies. Eventually, you're going to have youth meetings, teen meetings, men's meetings, women's meetings, and you got to know content. You got to have good material to teach them. Nobody is going to listen to the same thing, uh, you know, again and again. Meaning, even if it's repeated, it's got to be anointed of God. Right? Be clear with your calling and vision, because you, as a pioneer, are the vision bearer. You hold the team together. You hold the vision, and you're the vision caster for the ministry. Right? So be clear of your calling. Be clear of the vision. Look at Jesus, Matthew 6, 22 to 23. Shall we read that? Matthew chapter 6, 22 and 23. Yes, can one of us please read that? Matthew chapter 6, 22 and 23. Okay. Matthew chapter 6 verse 22 and 23 the eye is the lamp of the body so if your eye is clear your whole body will be full of light but if your eye is bad your whole body will be full of darkness yeah thank you so Matthew 6 23 the Lord Jesus is just putting out a statement and he's saying this is what it is if what is it One minute, let me get there the eye is the lamb of your body. If your eyes are good, 
your body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. You know, when in other places, even the Lord Jesus says, I've come for one task. One is to do the will of the Father. And what was the will of the Father? That was, you know, we know that he came into this world to die on the cross. He knew his calling. The Lord Jesus knew it. He knew the vision. He knew the purpose for what he has been sent for. And he was the vision bearer. Can you picture this? Jesus took 12 people. And almost all of them were not very valid testimonies in society. But he used them, those 12, to turn the world upside down. They went to different parts of the world and preached the gospel. That even today, we are talking about the Lord Jesus and his disciples. Be clear of your calling. Be clear of your vision, what God has for you. Right Now, over time, the way you fulfill those vis the vision can vary. Right, it changes. Methods can vary. Practices may vary. Uh, you know, conferences and events may change and vary. But the vision is always constant. It's always constant. The Lord Jesus' vision was to do the will of the Father. And how he went about doing it. He did miracles. He did signs and wonders. He, uh, it was very different. But the vision was to do the will. So you, as you and I, as a pioneer, get that calling, get that vision right. You know, I remember I get to speak to quite a few uh, pastors and leaders. And recently, I spoke to a pastor who is leading a church in North India, just from the, uh, you know, from the rural areas of North India. But it's a good developing area, good church. So you're saying, you know, the church is growing. He was sharing a few thoughts with me, and uh, you know, he was asking about how we can, uh, you know, they're still looking at options of doing things online as well, media, and, you know, trying to get those things involved. And I asked him, uh, you know, it's about eight or nine years that his church has been functioning, and uh, I mean, he's got about 100, 150 people in his church, so it was good. So, I asked him, what's the vision of your church? He said, I don't know. What is the vision? And I just want to share the gospel and bring people to Christ. So then, you know, I was able to just share with him that, you know, it's important to have a vision. It's important to have a mission and a vision and have values within the church because now that you're 150, uh, as the church grows and becomes 500 uh, or even 1,000, what's going to happen is you need to have a vision. You need to be a vision caster. Why are we meeting on Sundays? What do we want to achieve as a church? Uh, what, is the, what is the vision that God has given us as a church? How can I involve in that vision? So, you know, he began to understand, oh, there's so much that is... You know, it's not just about starting a church, but uh, we thank God that God is definitely using him. And but you know, there are there are times when we have to go back to the minors, meaning go back to the beginning, sort things out there, and then do what we have to do. Right? Look at this. Be willing to work twice as hard as others. And this is the most difficult part. Everyone want to be pioneers, but doing the work is sometimes the challenge. Right? First Corinthians, chapter fifteen and verse ten. First Corinthians fifteen and verse ten. Here's what it says: But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace to me was not without effect. No, and. I, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Paul is saying, look, for what I'm doing, I, for what I have achieved up to now, I've worked harder than everyone. Now, it sounds like boasting, but it's, it's a fact. 
there's a there's a Leonard Ravenhill, a great uh, preacher, uh, said when the Apostle Paul started off, he was about 50 years old, 33 when he had the Damascus, approximately 33 when he had the Damascus experience, 17, 14 years, three years in the desert, 14 years of waiting, almost about 50 years. This 50 year old man started his first missionary journey. And there's a saying that he alone did what all the 12 disciples did together. He worked the hardest, he traveled the most, he was shipwrecked, beaten, he, he went through constant persecution. But he's saying all of this I've been able to do because of the grace of God. So wonderful. He ends that by saying, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. As a pioneer, remember, you and I must work twice as harder. Right? If God wants to use us, we got to work twice as harder than others. Right? Now, the mistake we make sometimes is, again, we compare our spiritual life with others, and we're not to do that. You can never say, hey, my friend is praying one hour a day, and why should I pray two hours? Or why should I... My friend, you know, he doesn't go to church every Sunday. He goes at least once in two weeks, or he goes two weeks in a month. Why is it that I have to go every Sunday and I'm going and serving there? No, we we got to work twice as harder. And that's how God has designed it. We got to spend time in his presence. It's uh, now this working hard could be both physical and also it could be a lot of sacrifice right sacrifice of sleep sacrificing friends food there are times you'll have to fast and pray right everyone are eating and enjoying and you and we may think to ourselves why is it that i am the only one struggling that's because you are the pioneer if god has called you and me we got to go through it Greater the call, greater the responsibilities. Can you look at this in the in the Old Testament? Everyone were having fun. Why does Elijah have to go through all of this trouble, sitting in the mountains? Look at Jeremiah. Everyone were fine. Everyone were enjoying. They're saying they were looking at Jeremiah. They were laughing at him, saying, "Why are you going through all of this?" Jeremiah said, "No, I got to do it." I am the prophet for this nation. I got to work. I got to sacrifice for the people. Right? So uh, you and I, it's a call, right? Uh, we can't escape it. Now, what happens if God has called us as a visionary or a pioneer and we don't work hard? What's going to happen? We're going to see stagnancy in the ministry, meaning we're going to be in that same place. Now, church, especially when it comes to a local church, um, the success or the, the fruit of a local church is not always numbers. Right? It's not numbers always. It's also about how many, how many leaders you're raising up, how you're building up people from being babies in Christ to being mature in Christ. Right? Just remember this, you know, when I... Uh, just share this. When I was in Bible college, and you know, I, I really wanted to do something, right? And so we would, uh, we uh, uh, those who are here in person would know it. But we had this the whole timetable: five a.m. in the morning, we wake up, we pray, get ready, uh, then you come to your classes by uh, eight, eight thirty, and all that. Oh, uh, I just knew that I wanted to do something more. So I kept asking God, well, what should I do? I remember God ministering to me and saying, I want you to wake up earlier than everyone else. This was very hard for me, right? Because it's, it's not something, you know, I used to stay uh, with the boys uh, for uh, for for a couple, for almost the entire time I was studying. And I wanted to wake up early. So it was very hard. I said, God, I... Everyone are sleeping. Everyone, are in, you know, just resting. And uh, uh, why should I wake up? 
I had this question many, many, many times. Why should I wake up? You know, they are the ones who should be getting up and studying, and they are the ones you know uh, who should be doing. I, I, I do well in my exams. I've done well in all my tests and exams. I kept saying, "Why me? Why I don't want to get up." And I realized that if it's, oh, you know, I, I read this book where uh, you know, uh, I forget the author, but he says, "Why not to me? Why not me?" Ask us when when you the question comes, why me? Say why not me? So I said, okay, God, I'm going to change things in my life. I remember the you know just waking up at four early in the morning, four a.m. and I would spend time in God's presence, and then five a.m. everyone would get up, and initially I was so upset, you know. After the prayer, also hey, now these guys are getting up. I woke up much before them, uh, but over time. I began to enjoy being in God's presence. That there came a time that, for the entire time when I was in Bible college, every single day, I would wake up at three a.m. because I wanted that two hours extra in God's presence. Was it easy? Definitely not easy, but I knew there's a call of God in my life, and if I want the anointing of God. And if I want God to speak to me, I cannot be comparing myself with others. I cannot be comparing myself with what others are doing. They may be right, they may be wrong, it doesn't matter. But God, this is what I want to do. And I thank God that that habit has stuck on. Uh, it's, norm it's normal for me. You know. Uh, by the time I come for the first class, uh, six hours that, I, that I'm normally awake, but I enjoy it. It's not a burden. It's not like, oh man, I'm getting up to, you know, others are all enjoying. No, because we are, yes, we are enjoying it. You're enjoying being in God's presence, and you know that God is filling you. And it, it's not about working hard, but it's about God's anointing, just doing things in our life. And as a pioneer, these are steps we have to take. Right? We we have to be able to. Uh, you know, just go that extra mile. Five, pray, plan, prepare. Don't be hasty. Proverbs 21 5. Would anyone like to read that, please? Proverbs 21 and verse 5. The plans of the diligent lead to profit, as surely as haste leads to poverty. The plans of the diligent lead to profit. So pray, plan, prepare. Right? And and remember, we uh, I talked about this as a church. You know, we we have administration. We looked at the different stages administration so we have different teams that are involved and so right now what we do uh, i think i've already said this but uh, if this is a conference that's happening we already have the 2024 calendar out right every event for the entire year is, is already we're working on it it should be out anytime soon and if there is a conference we work six months in advance for one conference and, uh, six months in advance Right, so first, we confirm the date. Then we send and save the date emailer to the entire church. So for example, men's conference, all the men of the church get a save the date emailer. Then they get a, uh, then we go to three weeks of announcements. Right? So it goes on the video announcements on Sundays. Then they get an SMS and then the, uh, uh, the email is sent with the link for registrations. Registration link is sent. Then, uh, then the SMS is sent with the registration link. Uh, final reminder is sent, uh, and then the entire process. That, you know, to, uh, as this is happening on the other side, uh, uh, you have the teams that are involved in admin side, booking the venue. Uh, well, pre whoever is teaching, if there are teachers or preachers who are facilitating the. Uh, the conference were maybe some of them coming from outer station or within Bangalore. So there's, there's so much that happens six months in advance. 
work. And then after that, we have follow up after each conference like that. Right. So pray, plan, and prepare. Don't be hasty. Right. Uh, don't just make decisions. Uh, you know, because haste can end up in destruction or haste can end up in a loss. Right. So be emotionally strong. Very, very important. You'll have people coming and sharing your thoughts. You as a person, as a pioneer, remember you're just a person, you're a human being. You will go through ups and downs in life. You will go through emotions. You'll sometimes feel up, sometimes feel low. You got to be able to maintain uh, and, and be emotionally strong. Right. And that's where uh, we get, you know, being in God's presence really helps us in all of this. Right. Seven, get things order in your personal life. Don't let personal weaknesses become an entry point for Satan's disruptive attempts. Get things ordered in your life, in your personal life. Now, for example, speaking to uh, this happened many years ago, uh, speaking to this pastor. And he opened up to me, and he was, we were we were just talking, and he shared that uh, he this this pastor was as he was sharing, he said that I have one weakness, and that weakness is every month, at least once or twice, I watch pornography. I was taken aback. He's he's, he's a good pastor, right? Uh, not in this city, in a different city. Good pastor. Loves the Lord. Wonderful ministry. Churches growing. Good leaders. Good family. But he said this every month. If not once or twice, I watch pornography. What do I do? So I said, first thing I said is, get close the door for the devil. Get things right. If you have to take a break, take a break from ministry. Because sometimes we feel that if we are not there, the ministry is not going to happen, which is not true. Even if we take a break, there are people who can come in and do things. Never feel that without me, nothing is going to happen. Nobody is irreplaceable. Every person in this world can be replaced. Uh, that's that's a hard fact, but it's true. Right? Get things in order in your life. Don't let these weaknesses become a door for the devil. Right? Uh, don't let you know uh, uh, you know the enemy to come in. He's like a roaring lion. He will look for an open door. He will look for an open opportunity. Our responsibility is to close those doors. Now, I'm not saying that uh, you know. We walk a perfect life. No, we do make mistakes. We do get temptations. We do have things in our life that we need to change. But if we keep pushing that sin under the carpet, it's going to remain there. You know the saying, like an elephant in the room. It's going to remain there. But we got to get rid of it. We got to get rid of it. Close the doors so it doesn't happen again. Right? And and you know God has given us uh, his holy spirit god has given us scriptures right that we can declare we can proclaim we can overcome he says this he given us the weapons he's given us the armor of god he's saying we overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony we use all of this now even though uh, even though you and i may have the vision Sometimes, uh, or very often, it is your family that is doing the church planting. Why? Because now this is in certain cases, not always, but in certain cases, we have the vision, but others are doing most of the work. No, get things right in your life. And I've heard of many, many stories, well-meaning, anointed pastors, who have you know just fallen because they thought they are irreplaceable or you know nothing's gonna happen to me. No, the enemy is out to get us, but he's given but God has given us the strength. God has given us his weapons. 
right? So get things right in our personal life. Don't be ashamed to, if you have to get um, counsel, if you want to get help, go ahead, right? There's nothing wrong, right? Never feel that, hey, I'm a pastor. How can I go to another person and ask for help? Or how can I ask another pastor for help? Never feel that. Be open. Nine, eight, sorry. Develop your ability to draw strength, motivation, and discipline from God. Strength. We need physical strength, mental strength, right? When it comes to church and church ministry, you need mental strength. you got to be strong. Two, motivation. Something, you know, you're doing ministry for a person that you can't see. Right? Where's, where's the Holy Spirit? Where's Jesus? Right? And sometimes we may feel or get monotonous doing the same old thing again. Imagine five years, you're just waking up every morning and praying. Say, so, oh, it's the same thing, same prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Bless these people. Bless it's the same thing. It can get monotonous. Definitely, yes. But imagine you're leading worship for the past 10 years. It can get monotonous. It's natural. But you're going to get motivated by God. Say, God, even though I've been doing this for five years or 10 years now, but Lord, when you come, you will make the difference. And you bring get motivation. Then there's discipline. As a child of God, we must have discipline, right? A, a, a church planter or a pioneer in the ministry, a leader must be disciplined. We cannot be without discipline, and and just do things, right? No, uh, no. Uh, we got to make sure that we walk in a disciplined way, have a disciplined lifestyle, morning, okay, these are the things I'm going to do. So whatever works for you, right? So you can, uh, you know, just chalk out your day's plan, what you plan. Okay, this is how I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm going to try my best to set, uh, stick by these timings. Be disciplined in life. Never compromise on your time on, uh, you know, the word of God and prayer. And when it comes to church ministry activities, be disciplined. If there are things that has to go, uh, emails that you have to do, people that you have to call, get it done. Procrastination is not a good sign of a leader. So be disciplined, right? Be motivated from within, inside of you, right? Learn to relate with people well, right? We talked about this last class, right? Oh, a pioneer must be able to build bridges among people. And the Apostle Paul did that beautifully. He said to the Jews, I'll be a Jew. To the Gentiles, I'll be a Gentile. When he went to Athens and when he went to uh, Corinth, he was able to build bridges. He went to Crete, he was able to build bridges. He went to Beria, he was able to build bridges. When he was in Ephesus and uh, the churches in Galatia, he was able to understand and relate to them. And we must uh, be able to do that. We need to love and care for them genuinely. But the problem is what we must not do is look at people as projects. And OK, these are the project, project one, two, five. Did they do? Did it get done? Did they come? Did they do the work? No. Right. They they are people. Right. Relate to people. Learn how to manage relationships. Uh, where to draw the line. The ability to say no. Right now, this is something that took me a long time to learn. Right, because I always thought, okay, you know, because it's coming from a corporate sector, uh, working in the corporate for quite a few years, and then I came and joined Bible, everyone love each other, everyone care for each other, wow, you know, it looks very nice, right? Uh, so initially I was like, wow, this is how heaven is supposed to be. It's everyone so good to each other, loving each other. And I was in for a rude awakening when people started, you know, saying no, and people started you know, there were times when there were assignments given and say it's got to get done. It's, wow. But I really enjoyed the, those times. And uh, well, 
uh, and you know at a very young age i got into this pastoral team and uh i went through a very tough time because i i didn't know how to say no I, uh, even though i didn't like it i would say okay uh, okay as you wish or i would i i could not say no because these people are in you know they are better than me they are they know more than me uh but then i thank god that over time i began to understand that as a leader i must be able to say no and of course we do it lovingly uh, we correct also lovingly but we must develop the ability to say no we cannot agree to everything what people say right uh, without feeling guilty right so uh, for example there will be times when this happened many many years ago not not in apc but uh, there was this one time uh, uh, this these pastors had invited me to come and share uh, at a conference and this conference was supposed to happen in indoor uh, and so it was summer during christmas and uh, i was working in the corporate sector at that time uh, uh, and somewhere during christmas and he said can you come and uh, I, I i really wanted to go but i also didn't want to go because it was christmas time i wanted to be in my hometown with my family uh but but then you know i i i said no i felt very guilty because the pastor said to me see you don't have a wife you don't have children why why, why can't you come why, why can't you come uh whether it's Christmas or what Christmas is about Jesus only, you can come. So when I ended the call, I felt sort of feeling guilty. Oh, I said no to God's work. Uh, and you know, I remember calling him back and saying, okay, I, I, I will, I'll try to come. Just give me a few days. And then eventually I had to ask the Lord to remove that guilt. And I could confidently say, no, I can't come. Uh, but again, this is uh, this comes over time right uh, god will give us the strength god will give us the wisdom and when to say no how to say no so being in god's presence helps um develop required skills okay this is very important time management very important money management extremely important communication how to communicate with people ministry is about people you're talking to people you can say if if there are three sentences you have to say say it in three sentences you don't have to say it in six then by the time we say it in six sentences the other person will be wondering what is he saying just practical clear concise communication right uh and then again uh in a time that we are living in now we do need technical skills we got to learn we got to adapt to what is happening around us right so we uh, be able to uh, develop these skills right? uh, time management is something that as pioneers is you know because we be very busy and people will come people want to meet you you would have to go to visit people uh, uh, different areas in the ministry that you'll have to oversee uh, and so one of the things that you can do is something that really helped me is uh, so I what I do is I different ministries that right now that I'm handling what I do is I just uh, you know I break them down these are the number of hours I'm going to spend in this week for the church the second area life groups these are the number of hours I go, I'm going to spend the third area men's ministry these are the number of hours Bible college these are the number of hours worship practice worship team all of those things these are the number of hours so the, these five different areas okay these are the hours per week is what i'm going to spend so i'm managing trying to manage my it's not like i've mastered this art but uh, i'm still learning but it has helped me uh, than randomly just looking at different things right then develop sensitivity to identify opportunities for kingdom work uh learn to respond quickly be proactive be responsive right so as a pioneer uh there will be opportunities for kingdom work not only in your city but other cities uh 
uh, and you learn to respond, right? Be proactive. If you're in a place to go minister, you see that you prayerfully consider this as a door that God is opening. Go ahead, step into it. Uh, be proactive and be responsive. Uh, establish good mentoring relationships for yourself. So as a pioneer, this is something that uh, you know we may lack, or not only pioneers, but others as well, pastors. Uh, we may not have good mentoring relationships, right? And this is something that we must develop, right? We must have either other pastors, other uh, senior leaders, seniors in ministry to speak into our life, to give us some guidance. And uh, now it's not like, you know, we have to listen to whatever they say, uh, but you know, just being there to mentor, to help us, uh, right? And this will especially encourage us, exhort us as pastors and leaders. And finally, stay aligned and accountable to your church. Right? If you're sent from an existing church, stay aligned, be accountable. If you're a pioneer, still you stay aligned and be accountable to your church members, be accountable to your staff and the people who are working with you. Right? Be accountable to your volunteers. Just being accountable gives you a sense that, OK, we're all in it together. It's not like the pastor is here and we are doing all the stuff, right? No, we're all accountable to each other, right? So so we'll stop here uh, and we'll pick up from the next class. Uh, so we, we have chapter 24, Making the Journey. And we see chapter 25, 26, and 27, uh, just a few pointers that we will uh, we can probably discuss. So, uh, in a, and then the appendix is for major cities in India. So, uh, with chapter 27, we will be completing our course. So, we probably need another two or three uh, sessions more. And then after that, we can, I'll post the assessments on the classroom. And then uh, we'll be done with this topic. And we'll also take maybe a session to just do a quick review of everything that we did through the entire course. So, right. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining this class. Uh, have a good day, good week ahead. I'll see you soon. Bye.